All right, here are solutions for quiz seven for 243. Uh, let's see, we got a random sample of 400 basketball fans. 400 is important, that's N. Um, in this random sample, 90%, so the proportion in my sample, in other words, P hat is 0.9. I think that Kevin Durant is more likable than Kobe Bryant. All right, um, check to make sure that the population distribution is approximately normal. Okay, so there's a criteria for proportions. You need n times p times 1 minus p to be greater than or equal to 10. Um, we don't know p, but we do know p hat is 0.9, so we can use that as an estimate for, estimate for p. 400 times 0.9 times 0.1, which is 1 minus 0.9, um, and that is equal to 36, which sure enough is greater than or equal to 10. So good, we're done with that criteria. Um, on to the main part of the problem, create a 99% confidence interval. Okay, so for a confidence interval, you need a point, so maybe confidence interval, you need a point estimate, and then from that you need to add or subtract some number this many. Um, standard deviations, we all write SD. Um, so in this context with proportions, our point estimate will be p hat. Uh, then we want to add or subtract. It's z, not t here, because um, we're only estimating one parameter, p, from p hat. Um, and because we want to be 99% confident, our critical value is 2.576. And then we want to multiply that by the standard deviation um, let's see, the standard deviation of a proportion, that's this guy, is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. We don't know p, but we can estimate that with p hat. So we get 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 divided by 400, and then take the square root of that. Plug that into my calculator real quick. Um, and end up with 0 0.015. So what we get is p hat, which is 0 0.9, plus or minus 2.576 times these 0 0.015, our standard deviation. All right. Um, if you do 2.576 times our standard deviation, you get 0 0.9 plus or minus 0 0.03864. So what that gives you is an interval from 80.86136 all the way up to 0.93864, something like that, um, or approximately 86.1% all the way up to 93.9, I guess if I rounded that off. something like that. Um, and that's our interval. And I guess that's the end of part one. All right, part two. Um, I suspect that missing class on Tuesday causes students to do worse on Thursday quizzes. To test the claim, I calculate the average quiz score for n equals 36 students who miss class on Tuesday. I find this to be my x bar is 68. Uh, I somehow know that the average quiz score for all students is 75. So maybe I'll denote that mu sub zero is 75 and standard deviation is 15. So what's going on here is that all students average score is 75. And I suspect that missing class causes people to do worse on quizzes. So my claim, my alternative hypothesis, H1 or HA here, is that mu, well, I'll just write it out, that mu is less than 75. And mu, in this case, what I'm talking about is the population mean of students missing class. Um, 
So it's a little bit confusing here. You don't want to confuse this mu and this mu. This mu we know is 75. So mu sub zero is kind of the mu for all students. The uh, if missing class has no effect. And the mu that we're talking about here is the population mean just of the students missing class. So anyways, if that's the alternative hypothesis, then our null hypothesis, you can write it in one of two ways. Some people prefer mu equals 75, some books I should say. Some prefer that mu is greater than or equal to 75. Um, I'm fine with either one. So basically what this is saying, the null hypothesis is saying that missing class on Tuesday doesn't matter, that the mean is still the same, or maybe the, the mean would, you do better or at least the same on the quizzes. Um, okay, so calculate the test statistic. The test statistic will be a z-score. The reason it's a z-score is because we know sigma. And the way you calculate it is the same way we've been calculating. It's x bar minus mean divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So 68 minus 75 gives us negative 7. And you divide that by 15 sixths. Oops, 15 six is 2.5. And I plug that into a calculator, what I get is negative 2.80 is my C-score, my test statistic. All right, let's get a graph um, of the normal distribution. So what I'm going for here is you got your normal distribution, well, something like that. Good enough. Um, and we want to show the critical value for 95% confidence. Okay, so... Our alternative hypothesis here is that mu is less than 75. So we're talking about this left-hand side of the distribution here. There's some point right here, I'll denote it as z star, so that we get exactly 5% of the area in this table tail here. Um, you might happen to know that that value is negative 1.645. Um, and once you have that, we can figure out so what that does is it creates this rejection region right here. Anything less than negative 1.645 for our test statistic, then we're going to reject our null hypothesis. Um, so our test statistic we calculate up here is negative 2.80, so that's maybe somewhere out here. Um, how do I... Kind of running out of room, but z equals negative 2.80 right here. So... From that, our conclusion would be something like, because our test statistic is in the rejection region, the rejection region is that shaded area that I came up with above, um, we reject. That's what you do. If you're in the rejection region, you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that missing class maybe adversely affects quiz scores or something like that. Miss class, you do worse on the quiz. Um, so something like that, that's the end of your conclusion and the end of the quiz.